Hey everyone, this is Megan and Jax here. Everybody, this is my doggy, my favorite little pooch ever. And he and I want to help you with dogs, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey everyone, today we're gonna to be talking about how to choose a dog. So, have you ever gone to pick a dog and been thinking to yourself, oh, I love Huskies, I'm gonna get a Husky. You live in Miami, you know? It's not really practical for the dog, but it happens. I mean, I know people with Huskies and I live in South Georgia, so. You can't really go based on your favorite type of dog, unfortunately. A lot of people do, I've been guilty of it myself, so if you have, don't go bad. But next time around, maybe I can give you some tips to choose a dog better suited for your lifestyle, right? You need to think about the type of home you have. Are you in a tiny apartment, a condo, or a house? Um, and if you're in a house, do you have a small inner city backyard or do you have a bigger couple acre lot like in the outskirts in the country kind of how I am. My house sits on a two acre lot. That's something to really consider. Um, if you're in an apartment, I really wouldn't get a big dog because they don't have that much room to play and it can be a recipe for disaster. I mean, you have like your wine marinas, your Great Danes, your labs. Those are dogs that are high energy and bubbly and friendly and awesome dogs to be around, but it's cooped up in such a small space that it's not a very good mixture. So a lot of cities have started doing like dog parks to help combat this. And I don't know about cities around the U.S., but I know my city, Savannah, allows you to, like, have your pets pretty much anywhere downtown with you. Like, if you have them on a leash and stuff, you're good. Um, that's definitely something to look into if you do happen to, regardless of any of the things I'm about to tell you, want a big dog in a small apartment. That's still, that's all you. Do what you want to do. Just make sure your city has accommodations. So... We've talked a little bit about the houses and needs for space. The reason why they need all that space we talked about is because they're active. <laughs> the dogs that I mentioned, like Wine Rainers, Great Danes, Dalmatians, Labs, they're very active. They need like two plus hours of play a day. So if you can't give them that, you're, you're going to run into some common issues, chewing, destruction, you know, basic, basic puppy issues, and they will grow out of them, but can you put up with it during that time? Another thing to consider is, do you have children? I have a two-year-old, so you have to consider, although I do have a chihuahua, I got him before I got the child, but generally, I'm not going to bring a Yorkie or a chihuahua or a small, dainty, tinier dog that isn't as durable into a home with a child because children are learning to be gentle with animals. As a parent, that's one thing you need to do, teach your child to be gentle and how to love and respect animals. Some dogs are not as tolerant and as patient with that as others. Small dogs generally are not very tolerant. Somehow my dog ended up being the exception, but normally no. Normally for kids, Labradors are amazing. Or retrievers, golden retrievers. Those are really good dogs with, to have with kids because they're very patient. Um, they just love you. They're not, they, they take any attention you can give them pretty much. So they're very patient with your child learning how to correctly love them, correctly handle them. And they're also very playful with the kids. Another thing is, can you deal with the mess? What I mean by this is, can you deal with all the dog hair? I mean, you know, hu human hair falls out bad enough. Dog hair? Times 10. Literally, when I was working at different clinics, it would be like lint rollers everywhere. And we would lint roll our scrubs and go into another room because we had just finished helping a dog and we would have fur all over us. Can you deal with that? If a dog jumps on you with muddy paw prints, is it going to ruin your day? Some people, it might. And some people are like, Guess I'm going to go change. It just depends on your personality and if you can handle that. So, 
that's really one thing to consider. It's not that huge of a factor, but it is something I wanted to throw out there. Another thing is grooming. Some dogs require a lot of grooming. Sorry. I got lucky. My little chihuahua, he's got very short hair. I don't think he's ever been to a groomer to be groomed. Um, before I learned how, we would take him to get his nails done and stuff like that. But now I can do everything for him. So really, grooming isn't a big factor with him. But with a dog like an Afghan hound, if you don't know what that is, I'll throw in a picture. But um, just stick with me for right now. If you have an Afghan hound, it's going to require grooming because they have very long, regal, silky coats. And if those coats are not taken care of, they're not kept manageable, they're not groomed, they're not brushed daily, they can get matted up and cause a whole world of issues. Like, like a whole world of issues, honestly. So that's really something you need to think about. And grooming can be expensive. So... Can you afford it? Which is another thing that you need to think about overall, too. Dogs are expensive. Vet bills are pricey. Can you afford all the puppy shots that your dog needs to be protected later on in life? Can you afford flea, heartworm, and tick prevention? Can you afford yearly checkups? Is that something that works into your financial budget? And then time. Do you have time to devote to a dog? When you get a dog, normally you get you will get a puppy. Puppies take a lot of time. Puppies are basically babies, just with four legs and fur and a tail, okay? So, they have to learn to be potty trained or housebroken for dogs. Some dogs learn to be crate trained, and some dogs have to learn not to steal the big dog's food because they need the food specific to their size and their age of life. It, it just really depends. You have the time to teach your dog what you want it to know. If you want a very well-trained, well-behaved dog, do you have time to put into that? Because for the dog to listen to you, you have to train it and be stern, but also show it love and compassion. So that's a lot to think about if you want to get a dog. Which brings me to my last point, that dogs are a long-term commitment. When, you're, when you get a dog, basically you're selling this dog, I'm going to take care of you for the rest of your life. Like, here it is, me and you. So, if you have trouble with committing to things, or you might be the type of person that I'm all gung-ho going for it right now, 10 minutes from now, though, ah, that's a bad idea. Then you probably shouldn't get a dog right now. But, that's not my call. It's just a suggestion. If you're a person that doesn't mind committing to a to a companion, which is what your dog will become, then by all means, go find your dog. Every, everybody deserves a dog, in my opinion. I mean, whoever said diamonds are a girl's best friend clearly never owned a dog. That's what I've said my entire life. But I do feel it's important to know that you are picking the right dog for you, for your life, and your needs, and also the dog's needs, so that you two can mesh well together. So that's really my main tips on how to choose a dog. And if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave a comment on the video, hit the like button, and also subscribe. Please subscribe so we can see, you know, where to go from this. Your likes help me know what type of videos you want more of, or you can even tell me in the comments. Like I'm really open to feedback and engagement. I really want to go on this adventure with you guys. So let's connect. Okay.